Today, we're gonna to take this image here and we're gonna turn it into this image here with the film look creator. G'day, welcome back. I'm doing unwell today. <laughs> I'm sick. I took a day off work and had a can of Coke to try and destroy my insides. So that would destroy my sickness. That's why I see cans of Coke, the destroy of everything inside your stomach. But we're not talking about cans of Coke being the devil. We're talking about film look creator. So today I wanna to briefly go through it. I'm not gonna do a breakdown of the new tool itself. I just wanna show you how I used it in this really basic clip. This is our clip. It is ungraded as you can see. Now I've got a bunch of nodes that I've already done a little bit of work here. And the first thing I did was I set up my RAW settings. So because this is Ursa 12K, it's using Blackmagic RAW, RAW, whatever you wanna say. So in my RAW section here, I've gone down to Blackmagic RAW and I've changed my color space to DaVinci White Gamut, Gamma, DaVinci Intermediate. And I put Highlight Recovery on because I felt like this might've had some blown out of highlights. Now, normally it's just set to Black Magic Design and uh, I think Black Magic Design Film for its white balance, or I mean, sorry, for its color space, but I didn't want that. I'd rather work in DaVinci Wide Gamut. So obviously I've changed it to DaVinci Wide Gamut. Also my LUTs that I use are always set up for DaVinci Wide Gamut. Sorry if my voice sounds <laughs> really bad. I'm a bit struggling here, but that's okay. Okay, so now we don't need to do a IDT or a color space transform at the start because we've done that in the raw settings. And because this is raw, Resolve automatically picks it up. So basically Resolve does that IDT for us when using raw footage. Now we do need to do an ODT. Now I know I can do it in the film look creator, but I didn't want to. So I just did it in the ODT. So I'm gonna turn this on and we're gonna to go to effects and I'm gonna show you what I did. Input color space. We've gone from DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, Rec 79, Gamut 2.4, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. You've seen this a million times before. Basically all we're doing is going from our IDT, which is our DaVinci White Gamut, DaVinci Intermediate, and then going to our output color space, which is Rec 709, Gamma 2.4. Now, if you're doing something for the web or something like that, or TV, you'd use Gamma 2.2. But um, I've got set up 2.4 and I'm too lazy to change it now. And then luminance mapping, and then input custom max, etc., etc. Again, you've probably seen this a million times before. If you wanna see more about it, leave a comment below and I'll get real nerdy about it. Okay, so with our film look creator here, we want this to be like a LUT meaning that we want to put this before our ODT. Now, again, I know you can use the ODT. Sorry, I know you can use the Film Look Creator to do your color space right here, but I decided not to, I don't know why, but I just have, so I'm not going to go back and change that. But so just use everything as use timeline. So with my presets here, there is a whole bunch and I'm not going to go through today, but if you want to see what the Film Look Creator does and how you use it, Leave a comment below and I'll go through and make a really long winded, probably boring video about each of these presets and what they mean, et cetera, et cetera. I have it on custom because I've changed a bunch of stuff. With our output white, I want it to be D65, which is basically giving us a more neutral starting point in a white balance. So if I went down to like D50 here, oh, gotta turn this bad boy on. It's gonna give us a warmer look. So D65, it's giving us a more neutral starting point which I like. So there are things about this I like, and there's things about this I don't like. For one, I like the fact that you can change exposure, contrast, et cetera, et cetera, but I would never actually use exposure, contrast, and all this stuff, because I'm gonna use this more like a LUT, meaning it's gonna go on all my footage. If I'm doing a project and it has heaps of different um, footages, heaps of different footage, heaps of footages, heaps of different footage, and the white balance is different on all of them, and I'm changing my white balance here, and my exposure here, then it's just messing them all up. So I'd rather just keep it basically normal. Now it does change a little bit, which each preset you do, I'm pretty sure. Like I said before, I'm not gonna change this. I'm just gonna leave it as it is, and then I'd go back with a balance node. I would change my balance node. So I'd change my balance that way. So, I mean, this is a good idea but it's not something I would use. Now I like the bleach bypass because this is an overall look. We're not doing a subtle adjustment to our image. This is more like a LUT, so our bleach bypass, et cetera, et cetera. And again, with subtracted saturation, this is also a very good thing, but again, I wouldn't do it. Now I like the way it's set out. I like the way it does. 
saturation in Resolve, but not something I would use. Now, maybe you like it, maybe you don't, but let me know. I'd actually be interested if anyone uses any of these type of stuff. Split tone, I don't have it enabled because even though I do like it, there is something that I really don't like about the split tone, and that is simply, you can't see what you're doing. Now it shows hue angle. So if we change the hue, then obviously we're gonna change the look of our image. I'm not sure why that didn't work. Oh, gonna put a mount up, right? So we know what we're changing in terms of the color, but there's no little box here. So there's no little highlight box and like the shadow box to see how that split tone is interacting and there's no curve. So there is a tool uh, by Cullen Kelly called Contour and it has the little boxes plus it has the curvature. So how your split tone is looking on that curve. So let's say we want warm in the highlights. So we change our hue angle. So it looks like this basically. On the curve, it'll show you how that's splitting and how it's changing on the shadow area, which is really great because I think just think that is a really nice visual thing to have in. So the fact that it doesn't show you anything, I think is problematic. Even though I think it's doing a good job, I don't like the way you can't see what it's doing. Now, maybe in the future, they'll have a little update where you can see what's going on. But for me, I'm not gonna use it. I'd rather just use a LUT that I make instead. Um, there are also other split tone DCTLs you can get. Cole Henderson has a really good one, so maybe check that out. And there's also, I think Thatcher Freeman might have one too. So have a look at those ones. So I'm gonna turn that off. Now, vignette. Again, uh, I probably wouldn't use it. I did use it for this footage here, but I wouldn't use it because again, this is an overall look. So if I have like 100 clips and the vignettes on every single one of them, I don't want it on every single one of them. I just want it on certain ones. Not every clip needs to have a vignette. So I'd probably just leave that off. Halation, you can probably keep this on. There are other ways to do halation, but I mean, that's not too bad. Now the grain itself. I think not every clip needs film grain, surprisingly, even though I'm making a YouTube video and every YouTuber thinks that their clip needs film grain, but I, when working as a freelance colorist, music videos, et cetera, et cetera, films, not every clip needs film grain, but you know, this is good to have on. Why wouldn't you want that option? Again, all these options are great to have. It doesn't mean I'm gonna use them. So I would, for this clip here, it doesn't look like it needs film grain. So I just turn that off the image looks to me looks better because it looks it doesn't look as dirty this doesn't look like the clip needs to be a dirty look i mean that is the whole point of film grain now there are a bunch of other options here and i'm not going to go through them today because i just want to show you the basic set out now with the core look here you change it and obviously it will change the overall look of your image here so these are based on film stocks right uh, i think this one here is a fuji one I think this might be a Kodak one. They haven't called them, you know, the names because they probably don't want to get sued, but I think they're based on those film stocks here. Now the vintage one is a little bit wonky, but that's fine. But I mean, this is great. Again, it does change your image a lot. So that's pretty interesting. And again, the presets, again, I'm not gonna go through them all before. There are some that I don't like. I don't like the cinematic one because I don't like the way it does this, the Apple blanking. If I want Apple blanking, then I would do it in the timeline section so i'm not a big fan of that but i can 35 but you know great to have um nostalgia interesting look uh yeah okay so now we have our base look here i would say that this is our look here and then we'd build upon this here so again if i've got a whole bunch of clips here i'm not going to change my balance white balance etc etc i'm just going to leave it as is because i have no idea if the cinematographer shot everything at the same balance, maybe they missed it on one of the scenes. So we just leave it. So I treat this like a LUT. So the next thing I wanted to do is, I know I can add again, contrast in this thing here, but I didn't want to do this. So what I've done is I've used one of my LUTs that I've made and I've added the contrast from that LUT. So I put that LUT on and all I've done is right click, come down to composite mode and use luminosity. This meaning I'm only using the contrast, not using the color from that lump and then I've just backed it off just a little bit here. Now, looking at this clip here, I feel like his skin was a little bit wonky. So what I wanted to do is I just wanted to split it up a little bit more. So I've just done a little bit of adjustment on his skin tone here. So I've just tracked his skin really easily and I've gone to my HDR down here 
So what I've done is I've selected only the brighter areas in his face here. I didn't want his whole face to be one color. If you highlight that, we're just hitting these brighter areas in our face. So if we turn this off, turn this on, we're just sort of separating his skin just a little bit more and it's looking a lot better. Now that film grain has come on for some reason. So let's turn that off. So now we have that adjustment, just helping to make your skin sit in a nicer place. Now contrast, obviously I've done nothing. So I left that node just chilling out. With this one here, I've just taken down the highlights of our image here. So if we go full screen, this is beforehand and I felt like the highlights in this image were actually a little too bright. It was a little bit too distracting for me. So I've just softened all those highlights down. Now it's sitting in a much nicer place. So I can show you how I did that. So I have a preset for this and I went through this in another video. I'll leave a link below where you can watch it. Basically all you do is you're just highlighting the brightest areas in your image here by using the qualifier. You want to soften it right out. You don't want harsh edges. And then I've gone down to my primaries and just taken those highlights down. So I have a, like I said, a pre-designed node for this. And all I have to do is copy it from the gallery, put it on this node here, and it softens it automatically. So it's something that's really handy, something you use all the time for projects and something that I would recommend you doing. And there is a link below where I show you how to do it in the YouTube clip. Um, it's a very good trip. <laughs> Sorry, it's a very good tip. Not a very good trip. I wasn't uh, dropping stings when I was making that. Uh, it's a very good tip. So, you know, go watch the video and it'll show you how to do it and show you how to make that pre-adjustment. Now, I felt like the image was a little bit too warm for me. All I've done is just backed it off just a little bit from here. Felt like a little bit too magenta to me and just backed it off and make it a little bit more neutral. Actually looks a little bit too green. So what I've done in my balance node, gamma, I've turned it into linear, which is giving me an easier way to adjust my white balance here. So before and afterwards, so we're just sitting in a much nicer place and pretty happy with the results here. With my saturation, I've just added a little bit more saturation, well, actually a lot of bit more saturation and it's getting our image to be a much more stylish look overall. So next thing I wanted to do is I wanted to do like a classic lens blur with our image here. So what I've done is I've made three nodes here. They're all got a power window in every single one of them, but they're all slightly different because I wanted to have slightly different blurs. We have this one here, this one here, and this one here. And I've set them all to different uh, strengths if that makes sense. Cause I wanted them all to be a little bit different in terms of its blur. And that's just giving us this nice lens blur here. So that's a classic, you know, lens blur you get with older vintage lenses. I thought, well, look, we're using the film look creator. Why not give it that classic look? Now you can get a DCL uh, for this again from uh, Cole Henderson. It's really good. Recommend having a look. I think it's from Gore Henderson. It might be from Stefan, but I'm not sure. I'll leave a link below. They got some good websites. Now, the next thing I wanted to do is I just wanted to give our image here a little bit more density. So I've taken some of the green saturation away. I've made our image just a little bit denser. So we're getting more richer skin tones here. I wanted that blue to have a nice, rich, deep feel to it. I really wanted that suit to pop out. I feel like it looks really good. And overall, I've just increased the density of our image, added a tiny little bit of saturation and just gone through it and again just made different parts of our image stand out more i wanted the whole image just to feel a little bit more whole to me it looked a little bit too wishy-washy didn't have really look look to it i wanted this to be this kind of classic look to the image you know like he's like i don't know trying to sell some expensive watch or something like this it looks really good he looks like he's worth a lot more money than i am maybe he's acting he has a lot more money than me but he probably still has a lot more money than me. Overall, I really love the look of these blues. I love this DCTL. Skin tone's nice, rich. All our focus is on this guy. We had this really nice, soft light, which was, if we look back at our node here, that's before we made that highlight adjustment. And this is afterwards. And it just looks like the light is so much softer. And it just looks, to me, a million times better. But maybe you think differently, but... I'm really happy with how this looked. So basically, 
I think that's everything. Let's go through the nodes. Yep, looks all good to me. So a really quick and easy way to get a nice looking image. Now you can actually download this footage from Blackmagic itself. I'll leave a link below where you can get that. If you want to see more about the Filmlook Creator, if you want me to go through the Filmlook Creator and tell you how to use it, like step by step, what each thing does, leave a comment below. I know a lot of people have made videos about it, so I didn't want to just, you know, make another video. People think I'm just trying to chase views. <laughs> I mean, I'm like three or four months way off, so I don't think I'm trying to chase anything. Maybe trying to chase this sickness away. Yeah, basically not a bad thing. I think as updates come along, it'll probably get better, but that's just my opinion. I'm sure people who know it better can do a better job than me, but personally, I would just have a pre-designed LUT and use that instead, but that's just me. Thank you for watching. I do appreciate it or anything you want to see, leave a comment below. And uh, that's about it. I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope you're not sick and I hope you're out shooting footage or grading amazing new projects. If you are, tell me what you're grading. Tell me what you're shooting. Tell me what projects you're working on. Very interested to know what's going on in your film life career. Thank you again for watching. I have been Drew from Haiti Films and have a nice day.